Okay, let's go over this. Um, before we do that, if you look up here above the icon things, uh, our test is going to be April we're B day, so it's April 27th. That is a Wednesday. So we will have next week, we'll have two more things we're going to talk about. Then we'll have a review day and then the test. So next week on Tuesday, we'll plan to do the calorimetry lab. We have to go outside for that, so that's the one where we're going to take a piece of food and we're going to burn the piece of food and measure the change in water temperature to tell us how many calories are in the food. So we like to go outside to do that because we're burning stuff and we don't have very many, we only have one few to take. So we're going to use outdoors as ventilation. So we'll plan to do it Tuesday, but if it's bad weather or if it's really windy, then it won't work very well. So then we'll just kind of bump it back, okay? And then we'll talk about, we're gonna talk about nuclear energy. So we can switch there. We can switch the review day with it, um, or we might bump back the test, okay? So we're gonna do the calorimetry lab sometime, maybe next time, okay? Um, so that would be a good time to bring food. If you wanted to try to bring a piece of food that you want to know how many calories are in it, um, you could do that next week. So I would recommend not bringing things that have a lot of sugar because sugar tends to melt and then it won't burn as well. Um, so things like nuts would be a good option or like puffed food is good. So think of something uh, if you are interested in bringing your own food. We will have plenty of food that you can burn for your experiment. But if you want to bring something different than what we have, um, you can do that. Okay, questions about the lab next time, or the next time, or the next time. Okay, all right, so let's go over the spell quiz. We are on Thursday. We're on the last class before a long weekend. Oops, I don't want to do that. Clicking on the wrong button. So we. this is what we talked about last time. So first question, let's zoom in a little bit. Radio waves have the what? Good. Radio waves have the longest wavelength and the? Good. So this is in an inverse relationship. So if we were going to draw this relationship, as we um, have a higher wavelength, we have a lower energy, so it's going to be like something like this. So higher wavelength gives us lower energy. Okay. All right. The atmosphere has many interesting chemical reactions. Some of these reactions include ozone breaking apart and forming ions. This is caused by, so this is a bond breaking. Good, I. So high energy radiation breaks bonds. Low energy, what does low energy do? Not form bonds. So low energy is where we get the molecules that rotate or vibrate. If we have a radio wave, that's how our food heats up in the microwave. The microwave vibrates water molecules, and that's how our food heats up. So low energy vibrates and rotates. High energy can break bonds. So that's like why we would get a sun, sunburn, because UV energy is pretty high energy. All right, visible light has energy than infrared. Is it higher energy, lower energy? Good, greater energy, good, good. So these are the types of questions that I would expect you to know how to do for the test. Okay. All right. Questions on this? Well, you guys feel pretty comfortable with those questions? Okay. All right. Today we're going to take a few notes, and then we'll do it in a second. The second should go pretty fast. I just want to make sure. So this is kind of like what we talked about when you did the jigsaw, when you 
learned something and then you taught your neighbors. Um, so I just want to go over a few things and make sure that we know um, you know what I expect you to know. Can we talk about we talked about that? Can we learn the backwards? Where is visible light? We talked about that last time. Okay, so visible light, so we talked about low energy like radio waves or infrared rays can rotate and vibrate uh, bonds. Visible light interacts with the electrons. So if I have an electron and I shine light on it, that can make the electron move. Okay. So let's look here. We have our electromagnetic spectrum, but we're just looking at visible wavelengths. So if I have a UV photon and I have a red photon, which has a greater energy? Other way. So red has a greater wavelength, and the inverse. So this has longer wavelength, this has higher energy, so they're opposite. So this has a smaller wavelength, 400 nanometers, and this has lower energy. Okay. All right, so now we need, we need to talk about two words. Let's write it up here. So these are electron transitions. So I think in your your assignment you talked about emission. Is that true? Maybe? Maybe not. So we need to know these two words. Emission. So emission is when an electron goes from a high energy That. And when we're looking at this, what are these called? What are these rings called? Do you remember? Orbitals. Good. So a high energy orbital to a low energy orbital, and this releases a photon. Okay. So we have a high energy orbital, an electron drops from a high energy to a low energy orbital, and we get out of photon. Okay. And then we have this other word, absorption. And absorption is the opposite of emission. So we start from a low energy orbital. So our electrons, whoops, what did I do? I think I just exited. And keep them. Oops, there you go. So our electron starts at a low energy orbital and it jumps to a high energy orbital. It absorbs a photon. Oh, now it's not working. Oh, because I turned off my pen once. Where are they? There we go. So we start, electron starts from a low energy orbital, and then it absorbs a photon. So to go from a lower energy to a higher energy orbital, you have to get energy. And visible light interacts with electrons. So the electron starts at a low energy, it absorbs a photon, and ends up at a higher energy. So these are kind of opposites. So emission, you start at a high energy, you release a photon and drop down to a lower energy orbital. Absorption, you start at a lower energy orbital, 
the electron absorbs a photon and ends up at a higher energy orbital. Okay, questions, thoughts clear? Okay. All right, we're gonna skip drawing that. So just remember, we have, um, this is something that I think was on your worksheet. So if we're at the ground state, that means electrons are at their lowest energy that they can possibly be. Okay, that's called the ground state. Does that sound familiar from last time? Okay, good. And then the excited state is when an electron is at a higher energy than its ground state. So if an electron absorbs a photon and it's in a higher energy state, that is called its excited state. Okay. And these you should have talked about um, on your worksheet. I just want to make sure that we are all using this vocabulary. There's one more thing that we need to talk about. This is from quarter one. We talked about um, electrons in an atom. The outermost electrons in an atom have a certain name. Do you guys remember what that's called from way back in quarter one? The outermost electrons. You have a balance electron. Perfect. Good. Yes. So that's another word that we are going to use uh, when we're talking about emission or absorption. The valence electrons. So even if it's in the outermost ring, if it's in its lowest energy state, that's still um, that's still like it's in its ground state and it would still be a valence. Okay. All right. Questions here? I can't decide if you're ready or not. Okay, so these, this is what we talked about when we did the flame test. Do you remember talking about the flame test? So absorption and emission is what's happening in our flame test. So first our electrons are at their ground state, and then we give them energy. So in the flame test, we give the electrons energy by heating them. In this kind of transition, visible light hits the atom, and the electron can absorb so absorption, it can absorb that energy and move to a higher electron orbital. Okay. Um, and these orbitals are like rungs on a ladder or like stairs. We can't get to an orbital in between these two orbitals. So we get specific energies out of these atoms. So if I go from my ground state to excited state five, then the electron likes to come back down and relax, and we can get all of these different energies out. So this difference in the rungs corresponds to the energy that we can get out of the atom. We can't get an energy that's different than these rungs. So what this allows us to do is this helps us to be able to see specifically what type of atom we have. Where's my mouse? So, these specific wavelengths of light are because of the differences in energy of the orbitals. And electrons are moving from a high energy orbital to a low energy orbital, and they're emitting these really particular wavelengths of light. So then we can test standards, and then we can compare our unknown to our known sample. So based on this, um, what would our unknown element be? Good. So strontium has these three blue lines together. Our unknown also has these three blue lines together. And if we carefully go through, all of these emission lines match up with strontium in our unknown. Okay. So that's our assignment today. We're going to do a whole bunch of these. Okay. Um, but before we do that, our assignment, we're going to talk about also high energy. So. Each of these electrons in their orbitals has a specific energy associated with it. So high energy, we talked about high energy uh, electromagnetic radiation is ionizing. So that means it can kick electrons out of an orbital and that can also break bonds. So high energy radiation can form ions, that's called ionization, it can break bonds. So UV, X-ray, gamma, those all can 
refund. And we have to be careful when they're around us. So like UV, we can get a sunburn. X-ray, we can also become burned. And that's, um, that's also why when you go to the dentist, they're really careful and they put like a blood apron on you. Um, and gamma rays are also, they can damage your body tissues. So that's important. Watch out for those. Okay, so we also use um, x-rays to figure out what kind of samples we have. So this is an instrument called an XPS. Uh, x-ray, I don't remember what it's called, um, but we call this XPS. And um, I've used this instrument to figure out what metals are on the surface of a material that I was working with. So this helps us to determine what type of elements we have. This also can tell you if you have, we've talked about oxidation state. That XPS instrument can also tell you if you have iron two or iron three. And so um, based on these different orbitals, you use a high energy X-ray to kick out an electron and then you measure how much energy that electron has. And you can tell based on the energy of the electron what um, what element you have and what oxidation state your element is in. So that's a pretty useful technique. Uh, you guys should have talked about Wilhelm Rotogen. He was the guy who discovered the first X-ray. So this is the first X-ray, and this is kind of interesting. So the story that I've heard is that he discovered the X-ray. He was taking X-rays of things, and he called his wife over and said, hey, come put your hand on this. And so this is his wife's hand. You can see her ring. Um, and that's the person who discovered the first X-ray. So that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure she would have done this if she knew that it was X-rays were ionizing radiation. OK, I think that is all. OK, questions about emission and absorption, visible light? So let's review. If I have low energy radiation, like radio waves or infrared radiation, what, what does that do to matter? How does it interact with bonds and molecules? Not create them. Good. Rotate and vibrate. So low energy can rotate and vibrate bonds. Good. How about visible light? How does visible light interact with matter? So electrons, it moves electrons. I think that's what you're saying. So visible light can move electrons up, or visible light is emitted when an electron falls from a high energy orbital to a low energy orbital. Good. Okay, and then high energy. What? How does that interact with matter? High energy electromagnetic radiation. Good. We have ionizing radiation. Good. It can break bonds and ionize. Good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hand you out your assignment now. Or we're going to talk about it, and then you can work with yours. So I have a packet up here. There's not one for everyone, so I would work. This would be a good thing to work in my group to do. So you have two. These are your reference spectra. So we, we have tested these. We know what they look like. Okay, um, and then we have a whole bunch of unknowns. So there's 16 of these, and your job is to identify what elements are listed in this emission spectra. Okay, so what I would do is I would go through and line them up and see which one. So this one at the bottom, everyone tells you how many. It says which two hot glowing gases produce the bright line emission. So you're going to go through and match and find which two gases are represented in this spectrum. Okay? Some of them have two, some of them have three. So just look at the bottom. That, that bottom sentence tells you how many to look for. Okay? So there is not a paper to write on, so you can either write, I can, there's some scratch paper up here, or you can do this on Canvas using a text box, or you can do this in a Google, Google Doc. So however you want to record your information to submit it. Um, Questions on that? Does that make sense? 
Okay. So you should have some time at the end. Um, so if you have time, I would look at your grades for chemistry, see if there's anything that I can help you with, help you turn in. Uh, we are getting pretty close to midterms. We have about two more weeks before midterms. And then May goes by really fast. So try to get your grades up now so you don't have to worry about it in May. Okay. All right. And then there's answer keys. So if you need to check your work as you're young.